China's central bank announced on January 27th that starting this year, Chinese financial institutions are required to collect, verify, and report customer information to the government when handling cash transactions of more than 50,000 renminbi or 10,000 US dollars for foreign currencies. How is this related to Beijing's push for digital renminbi, and why is digital renminbi so important to the regime? Hi everyone, I'm Lei. Welcome to my show. The announcement requires financial institutions must identify and verify the customer, as well as record and register the source and planned use of the funds, if the transaction is over fifty thousand RMB or ten thousand dollars. In addition, non-bank institutions must perform due diligence in verifying customers when selling prepaid cash cards over ten thousand RMB in value. Or when the total cash card activity within 30 days exceeds 50,000 RMB. Around the same time, this policy was enacted. Two small private banks in China announced the suspension of their cash business. Beijing-based Zhongguancun Bank announced that it would stop over-the-counter and ATM cash deposits and withdrawals, effective in April this year. And Zhenxin Bank in Liaoning Province. Said it would suspend cash services from March. Zhenxin and Zhongguancun are two small private banks established in 2017. The authorities chose them as a test run for preparing banks for a full digital yuan platform. The two announcements, one on cash transaction tracking and the other on banks suspending cash services, demonstrate that Beijing is stepping up control to prepare for mass digital renminbi rollout. More importantly, a cashless society is the Communist Party's solution for addressing long-term corruption, money laundering, and capital flight problems. In the mainland, there is a saying that a significant amount of money in private hands does not flow in the CCP's banking system. A government official told a friend of mine that the amount is equivalent to the total of local government's annual land concessions. How much is that? According to official data in 2020, the revenue from local state-owned land concessions was 8.4 trillion RMB, which is about 8% of China's GDP. So it's believed that 8.4 trillion in cash is in private hands and does not flow through the banking system. What does this mean, and how do we know the number is correct? Let's first look at how much money was found hidden by corrupt officials. The former party secretary and chairman of Huarong Asset Management Company, Lai Xiaoming, had more than 270 million RMB stashed at one place, which he called his supermarket. The money weighed three tons. Wei Yuanpeng, deputy director of the coal department of the National Energy Administration, had 200 million worth of cash found in his home. Investigators brought 16 money counting machines to count the bills, and they burned out four machines on the spot. When the former party secretary and director of the Shanxi Provincial Financial Supervisory Bureau, Jing Hui, was removed from office, investigators found 400 million RMB in cash at his home. These three cases alone involve nearly 1 billion RMB. And two of the three individuals are only provincial, mid-level officials. There are more who have embezzled millions, tens of millions, or hundreds of millions in cash. How many of them are in China? According to the CCP's statistics, Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign had dealt with about five million corrupt officials as of June 2021. Assuming that each person had embezzled one million in cash, that's five trillion RMB. Now we haven't factored in the corrupt officials who have not been discovered, so the 8.4 trillion is a valid rough estimate. The New York Times Chinese edition published an op-ed in 2014 by a Chinese writer who estimated that total cash withheld by corrupt officials and not in circulation accounted for 50 percent of China's M2 monetary supplies. Half of China's M2 in 2014 would be about 55 trillion RMB. The writer coined the phrase "the economy of corrupt officials" and explained that corrupt officials' huge amounts of cash helped suppress inflation in China 
because the money is not in circulation. He proclaimed, corrupt officials stomped inflation. However, this is still not the biggest problem that concerns Beijing. On December 8, 2021, CCP's Central Commission for Discipline Inspection announced that a board director of the China Banknote Printing and Minting Corporation, Chen Yaoming, surrendered himself and is under investigation. Two weeks later, news broke out that Chen illegally printed a duplicate set of two trillion renminbi banknotes. Major state media outlets carried the news. A day later, China's central bank suddenly issued a statement calling it a rumor. The widespread effort to dispel the rumor, of course, made more people aware of the problem, and they became highly suspicious. Printing two trillion worth of banknotes with duplicate serial numbers is the same as underhandedly issuing an additional two trillion renminbi. Experts say that this is not easily detected if the notes are issued through financial institutions in different regions. Although China's central bank denied the illegal activities, corruption has plagued China's money printing agency. The suspected official, Chen Yaoming, held the position of deputy general manager for 20 years. Ironically, he was also a member of the anti-counterfeit group. In 2021, he became the company's board member. Five months before Chen got into trouble, his former boss, He Ling, who had retired nearly three years ago, was investigated. The 63-year-old He had served in the Central Bank of China and the Shanghai Banknote Printing Factory for many years. He was the deputy party secretary and general manager of the China Banknote Printing and Minting Corporation from 2003 to 2013. Before He Ling was investigated, Gong Shiliang, the former party secretary and chairman of China Banknote Guoding, a subsidiary of the China Banknote Printing and Minting Corporation, fell from power in January 2020. His company handles banknote appraisal and grading in addition to the manufacture and sale of precious metal and renminbi derivatives. We probably will never know what these disgraceful officials did, but it's safe to say that Beijing is fully aware of the corruption and loopholes in its financial systems as a result of these corrupt people and many others. It wants to exercise more control by using digital renminbi to stamp out the problems. For those holding large amounts of cash, it will be more and more difficult to launder money. The renminbi digitization process will gradually squeeze out those idle cash reserves stashed in someone's basement or garage. With digital renminbi, all transactions will be monitored by the central bank. The CCP's goal is to have full control by having all money and transactions transparent. And the two announcements we saw at the beginning of the video are just steps to get there. On October 22, 2021, Mu Changchun, director of the Central Bank's Institute of Digital Research, revealed that 141 million digital renminbi personal wallets and 10 million corporate wallets had been issued, with the cumulative number of transactions reaching 150 million and total transaction value approaching 62 billion renminbi. However, with the pros come the cons. The risk associated with digital renminbi is high for Beijing. First, fake digital renminbi wallets can be copied and tampered with, resulting in the proliferation of counterfeit money, a prevalent and unique problem in China. I've already seen warnings against fake digital renminbi. Secondly, if the banking system is hacked and financial records tampered with, it will create chaos in society. For consumers, digital renminbi provides no privacy. The communist regime will know everything you buy and own. It will also be easier for government to punish people by imposing taxes, issuing apportionment, forcing donations, and freezing deposits. So today, appropriately for this episode, let's learn the Chinese word for money. It's qian. You see, on the left side, there is jing, which means gold. And on the right side, there are two of the same character, ge, which means weapon or war. Putting them together, money is the gold that can cause wars. 
since we have two ge, it makes us fight not just once but twice. We fight with ourselves because we worry about not having money, and we fight with others to compete for money. It's pretty true, isn't it? There's also a similar saying in the West: "Money is the root of all evil." Thank you for watching. That's all for today. Please like and share my videos. See you next time.